What's up people, we are here with another visual novel. This one is called Eden with a little star slash asterisk at the end. So most of you probably know me from the Sakura series which I've done every single game of so far and I'm currently waiting for blah 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 Sakura Fantasy Chapter 2 which should have come out like at the end of August or something or at the end of July I don't know it was supposed to come out somewhere during the holidays but it got delayed and I have no clue when it's gonna come out but hopefully soon and there's another Sakura game in the making or at least yeah in the making as well which was recently brought to my attention it's called Sakura Swim Club and yeah you can guess what's gonna happen there but those are two ga uh, upcoming Sakura games but I have no idea when they're going to be released so whenever they do get released you bet your ass I'm gonna play them but for now we're gonna do I wanted to do some sort of a different visual novel because um, I have fun playing them or reading them whatever you want to call it and I wanted to do something different though because you know the Sakura series that's filled with heavy heavy plot and fan servers and whatnot but I wanted to do one that was sort of different from that and Eden was definitely highly recommended so I'm definitely interested into seeing how this is gonna play out I played a little bit and I actually disabled the voice acting because there was Japanese voice acting but the reason I disabled is it is because I felt like because the moment the text starts to come up the sentence the voice acting plays plays out and so I sort of have to wait and the w I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to read it out then because that's how I play it right I read the entire text like I always do in the Sakura series so with voice acting jumbled in between there that would seem really awkward and perhaps or I don't know exactly for me it felt awkward to do it that way and I it also kind of kept me out of my rhythm in a sense so I decided to just completely take out the voice acting and just read everything like I always do so yeah this is something different so if you if you're not into it that much that's fine but i'll probably still continue playing it as long as i enjoy it so yeah i hope you guys will enjoy it though because i think this is gonna be pretty fun so or at least interesting or shall i even say sad spoiler alert no i have no idea but yeah let's do this start a new game I mustn't stop. I told myself over and over again. Whether I wanted it to or not, my heart would leap to the past if I stopped, even for a second. My memories were gentle, beloved, beautiful, and suffocating. If I were to immerse myself in them once, I might not never be able to pull myself back. That's why I had to keep my hands moving. I thought of nothing as my fingers tore into the gaping hole in the ground before me. I thought of nothing. But it was futile. My heart leapt. What crossed my mind was but a mere ordinary day. On that day, she... She what? What did she do? She stood in the wind. She walked silently across the light green carpet and ascended the gentle incline. Her long hair fluttered in the wind which carried a touch of humidity. I walked behind her, close enough that her hair might have touched my hand had I reached out. I was careful not to disrupt her while she basked, uh, while she basked in the sunlight. The fragrance of the grass and the song of the trees swaying in the breeze wafted all around us. Suddenly, a clear, high-pitched sound, like a whistle, echoed nearby. Ah, Xion halted and looked up at the sky. In the distance, a white bird danced about in the deep blue sky. It circled repeatedly as though searching for something. Little by little, it flew higher until its figure disappeared in the distance. She dashed. Her steps were light, as though she wouldn't allow herself to feel the weight of her body, just like that bird. I hurried after her. Wait! Xion! 
she must not have heard me. Once she began to run, she would not relent. She was chasing that bird, now no more than a dot in the sky, as far as she could. However, cruelly enough, the path ended. Moving pictures? Holy crap. She stood exhausted at the peak of the hill, the side of a hazy mountain ridge with a lake stretching below it shimmered in the distance. It flew away! The bird was nowhere to be seen. Xion was panting but continued to gaze at the sky. That bird! I wonder where that bird is headed? Who knows? I shook my hand, head, uh, head gently. Is that the bird? It can go wherever it wants. Anywhere? As long as there's a sky? She tilted her head as a faint smile crept on her face. The girl in her one-piece dress smiled amidst the endless green expanse. I felt like I had detached from reality, like I had wandered into a fairy tale. That would be nice. Her eyes looked once more to the sky. Ah. It's shining especially strongly again today. The sun, the sky, the clouds, and an ominously red solitary star shone in the sky she stared so intently into. As long as that star was in the sky, this fairy tale would not have a happy ending. That star which glimmered even midday was a symbol of destruction that would arrive in a not so distant future. Uh oh, a meteor? However, there is still time. The world hasn't ended yet, right? Yeah. It seemed to me as if she paused a moment before nodding. Xion undoubtedly understood much more about this world than I did. She likely knew many things she did not need to know as well. Hey, Xion. Hmm? Will the world truly end? Yes, it will. This time she nodded without a moment's hesitation. But it is only fun to live in the present because we know there will be an end. Both you and my life here taught me that. Right, Ryu? I stopped breathing for an instant. Her smile was beautiful. That expression. Those words, I couldn't sense an ounce of regret or doubt. I said something like that? I managed to calm my heart and say it as bluntly as possible. Even if you forget, I will not. I will absolutely never forget. Her gaze rose to the sky again. Just a little longer. She looked like a saint offering a prayer to the heavens. I want to be beneath this sky and these clouds just a little longer. She gazed longingly into the endless distance. Such a simple wish. I'll grant it. That was my purpose after all. Ryo, yes? I want to be here. Here with you. We returned to the field at the end of our post-lunch walk. The temperature rose just a little, so I told Xion she could go back to the house, but there's nothing for me to do if I go back. Don't treat me like a guest, even I can be of some use. If she put it that way, I couldn't stop her. Speaking of which, she had been picking the 
auxiliary buds from the tomatoes for a while now. What's an auxiliary? Axillary? I didn't think it, it was a job that required such concentration. Uh, huh? I stopped digging in the potato field, potatoes, at the sound of her tiny shriek. Xion, what's wrong? Look at that ripe, luscious tomato. Oh. I stood up and rushed to her side. I almost said I wanted to take a bite out of it, but who the hell eats a raw tomato, right? Um, it was an earthworm. Was his name Jim? I stared at her silently. But they're grotesque no matter how many times I see them. She was self sheltered to such an extreme that she had almost never came into contact with them before. It wasn't just earthworms, she had only ever seen insects in encyclopedias. Shouldn't you be used to them by now? You've been working in the field for two months already. Yeah, she was a little disheartened. Perhaps I had teased her too much. Ah, Xion. Oh, yes? Catch that earthworm and put it in a plastic bag or something. While you're at it, see if there are any more. More earthworms? Are we going to eat them? We're not going to eat them. We'll go fishing this evening and use them as bait. Use these living creatures? She seemed to be experiencing some culture shock. I never got tired of watching her. The previous dignified Xion was fine, but I couldn't help but be amused by the way she gushed over everything she saw like a child. Okay, I'll do my best and try to collect some. Yeah, go for it. Ah, uh, why does she always go like ah? Uh, huh? She gazed at where the po potatoes were planted. The potatoes, they're really spreading their leaves. Yeah, it looks like we're, uh, we'll be able to harvest them soon. I took a quick look under the soil and they seem to be doing well. Wait just a second. I just realized it's only been 30 days since we planted the potato seeds. Why have they grown so much? It's because they're gen genetically modified. Genetically modified? They were engineered for cultivating, uh, cultivation on the colony ships. Space and energy are limited on the ships, so she seeds which could grow and thrive even with limited nutrition were created. So these are those potatoes. She gave a small nod. These are resilient seeds that can be harvested in a short period of time and can grow in extreme conditions like deserts or Siberia. Xion, how do you know so, or why do you know so much about them? I'm the one who modified, modified their genes. I've also done eggplants, tomatoes, cucumbers, radishes, carrots, celery. I don't like celery, so I didn't actually want to modify it. I would have rather exterminated it. <laughs> wow, that's extreme. I don't like it, so I shall destroy all of it. If I wasn't mistaken, she was a mechanical engineer. Why was she working on those sort of things? I thought she'd be virtually helpless when it came to fieldwork and agriculture. This sort of reminds me of the... What was the movie? Interstellar, that's what it's called. Wow, I had to think about that way too long. At first I thought gravity because it's what like people going to space as well, but no. It's interstellar, right. Uh, where were we? But clearly I was mistaken. I'll try to collect some earthworms, but she peered into my eyes. But it's not very amusing to just collect bait. So teach me how to fish. Oh sure. Thanks, Rio. Rio. Evening came and we returned to our cottage. Of course, we had to eat after all that manual labor, but there was something else we were we had to do first. We left today's harvest in the kitchen, and I went into the living room with Xion. All right, Xion, let's start. Yes. She nodded obediently and took her seat. I examined the lining of her eyes. Wow, it's blinking. 
and the hue of the inside of her mouth and confirmed nothing was particularly out of the ordinary. Does he think she's an alien? I took her pulse and blood pressure and then her temperature. Nothing seemed peculiar here either. Do you feel strange at all? You asked me this, that this morning. This morning was this morning, now is now. So... I'm fine. I would tell you if anything were wrong, I wouldn't hide it. You seem like you're pushing yourself, I can't be too careful. I didn't intend to cover anything up either, how regrettable. In that case, would you like to do a complete physical? You might want to use the stethoscope as well. Having said that, she suddenly reached for the shoulder of her dress. Wait a second! It's, it's so you'll trust me. You'll believe me once you're, you've done a thorough examination. Alright, I get it. I surrender. S surrender? She removed her hand from her shoulder and tilted her head curiously. Good grief. This was why I couldn't deal with airheads. But... Her expression stiffened. If you must worry, then I'll accept any sort of examination. I could see a tinge of red in her face. Of course, it probably wasn't because of, of her poor health. Just how much of it was because she was naive, and how much was intentional? Well, it's not like I'm holding back or anything. Holding back? I mean, in the military I only dabbed in the basic field medicine. In reality, I wasn't capable of making a genuine diagnosis. The best I could do was follow Eli uh, Elika's notes and perform a layman's ins inspection. I don't see anything out of the ordinary, so I'll just say you're fine. Shall we make dinner? Yes. She nodded with a smile, her cheeks still a faint blush. Thinly sliced ham and lettuce between bread, vegetable soup and a lightly seasoned foil roasted salmon. Tonight's dinner was modest, but Xi'an enjoyed it all the same. She was smiling from start to finish. It was delicious. You are really good at cooking. Why thank you. I was a little or it was a little embarrassing to be praised by someone sitting right in front of me. I placed some after dinner tea before her. I set down my chair and sat on the other side of the table. <sighs> Xion's tongue was a little sensitive, so she blew on the steaming drink to cool it down. I could have just brewed it cooler to begin with, but it was amusing to watch her do this. It was a guilty pleasure of mine. Of course you'd like to see her blowing, right? Huh? What are you looking at? Oh. Nothing at all. Although Xion looked suspicious, her uh, attention quickly returned to her cup. Today... Hmm? Today was fun. I really can't believe I'm able to spend my time like this. Huh? Our times were uneventful. We mostly spent our time working from dawn to dusk in order to keep food on the table. But she considered such a mundane, everyday life fun. I couldn't help but feel a little sad. Well then, may I get in the bath first? Oh, of course. I'll clean up. Then... She was about to stand up. Uh, she was about to stand, but suddenly stopped. Yo, what's wrong? Why don't we <laughs> why don't we get in together once in a while? I thought it was going to be different. <laughs> different from Sakura. I nearly dropped my cup. Hey, hey now. What in the world are you saying? I'm not used to bathing by myself. She certainly wasn't your ordinary shut-in. Oh my god. Don't worry about it. J just hurry up. But it's quite difficult to wash my back and hair by myself. Just do your best to clean yourself alone. What is it with Japanese guys, man? 
You're so cold. She left the living room sounding disappointed. What a troublesome girl. But for the two of us to live together like this, and for me to be willing to wait on her, was this sort of thing inevitable? What about my own feelings? How did I feel about her? When she says or does such provocative things so innocently, I feel like the cage around my heart is falling apart. Although this probably wasn't a bad thing, not in the slightest. From the sound of her breathing, I was certain she had fallen asleep. I stood from the chair beside her bed and dimmed the lights. I considered leaving the room, but decided to return to my seat instead. Aww, she looks so cute. Her breathing was normal, not particularly erratic. She was fine. I was just worrying too much. Hmm? Her hand had slipped out from under the comforter. I gently took her hand to put it back under the covers, but suddenly she squeezed back. It wasn't a particularly strong grip, but it was enough that I couldn't let go. Her petite hand, white as snow, I silently squeezed back. Her hand was a little cold, but I could certainly feel the warmth. Her mouth was moving ever so slightly. Like she was repeating the same words over and over. What was she whispering? As I began to lean in, I suddenly stopped. Even in the darkness, I could clearly see it. A trickle of tears streamed from her closed eyes. What could be so sad? Could they be tears shed from someone she once knew? How much sadness is she carrying in her dreams, in her heart? I slowly released her hand. Unable to wipe, uh, unable even to wipe her tears away, I turned my back to her. I can't face these sorrows without you, just yet. Because I'm still unable to deal with my own. Alright, well, <laughs> that was such a sad moment. But we're gonna end this video here while I wipe my, my own tears, I guess, because that guy didn't want to do it for Xion. I think that's what her name is. Xion and Rio. So yeah, this is the end of the first video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more, and I shall see you in the very next video. Peace.